Hey everybody, Forrest here. Today I want to dive into part three of our basic Photoshop tutorial and talk about selections. Selections are one of those things that I think if you're going to use Photoshop, they're probably the most important thing to know how to use and be very proficient with because they can allow you to do in Photoshop what is almost impossible to do in Lightroom. And when you're working with multiple programs, what you can do in Lightroom and Capture One Pro, you usually want to stick to those programs to do it in and use Photoshop as little as possible. Selections, though, are one of those things that Capture One Pro and Lightroom are usually unable to do. So let's dive in. Today I want to talk about three or really two main selection tools. Tools that we can use to make very accurate selections of different parts of our images. The first tool is what's called the magic wand. And the magic wand is one of those tools that's been around for a very long time in Photoshop. It's very powerful, but you need to understand its limitations. The magic wand sees the world in black and white. It doesn't see any sort of color in the world. And so what you need to do when you're using the magic wand is imagine your image as if it was black and white, as if it had no color to it. Now what the magic wand is good at, you guys, is seeing the differences in tonalities. What I mean by that is, is, let's say we had an example image of a person, a portrait shot, where the person is backlit. We can envision that that person, if they were properly exposed, the background would be much, much brighter than the person. And if we were going to try to select the person or select the background, the difference between the two is all in brightness. One is very bright and one is very dark. And the magic wand tool would have no difficulty seeing that contrast between the lighter areas and the darker areas. In this example here, I have um, some shapes that I've cut out. And there's really lots of shapes here that, that have a stark contrast. But I'm going to focus in on this black blob here. So if I was trying to select this black blob, the difference in brightness between the black blob and the surrounding area, the white area, is very stark. One's black and one's white. And that contrast, the magic wand tool will have no trouble discerning. So what I'm going to do is on my toolbar, I'm going to grab the magic wand, which is the fourth tool down. And it actually shares a little spot with the quick selection tool. So sometimes you have to click and hold in order to grab the magic wand. We want to grab the magic wand. And then we want to come up here to the options bar. And the options bar, you guys, when you start getting into using tools in Photoshop is super key because each tool has its own set of options. And it's very important to make sure that the options on the options bar are exactly the way that you want the tool to operate. Now, a couple options that I want to set in here. First of all, I'm going to put the first of these four selection modes. I'm going to pick the first one. And we'll talk about the difference between those in a minute here. I'm going to pick the first one. For sample size, this is when you click how many pixels around the actual pixel that you click on is it going to sample. It's going to take an average of that many pixels. So if you are zoomed in real, real far and you're trying to get a very precise selection on one specific pixel, you're going to want to use the point sample mode that will just read one pixel. Alternatively, if you have a little bit of a gradient, a little bit of a gradation, some, some noise maybe, some differences in those pixels, you might want to do a 9x9 nine nine sample or a 3x3 three three sample so that it takes the average of all of the pixels surrounding the one that you click on. In this case, I know that all of these pixels are exactly black, so I'm going to do point sample, and as long as I can get my point right in the middle, I'll be good to go. But usually I leave this on a 5x5 five five or an 11x11, 11 11, figuring that I want to have a little bit of wiggle room there. I don't need the exact pixel that I clicked on. The average of the surrounding area would be just as good. In this case, I'm going to do point sample. And then tolerance. The default tolerance should be 32. That's what Photoshop sets it to. If yours is different, it means you've changed it. You can always just type in there and set 32 back. Here's what that means. When you sample a pixel, when you click with the tool, it's going to tell Photoshop that that is the tone that you're interested in. And again, don't think color. Like you could click something gray, or sorry, click something red, and it's not going to see the difference between the red and the green. It's only going to see the difference between the red in a black and white world and something that's different in a black and white world. So keep that in mind. You click on the, the, color, the tone that you're interested in, not color. You click on the tone that you're interested in. And if your tolerance is set to 32, it's going to go 16 pixels darker than that tone and 16 pixels lighter than that tone. And anything in that range that is an equal tone to what you clicked on, it's going to select. 
and anything that's not in that range, it's not going to select. So if you want to be very particular about the tone of pixel that you click on, you're going to want to reduce the tolerance. If you want to leave a little bit more room, you increase the tolerance. Usually 32 works pretty darn good. Okay, so I've got my options set correctly. I'm going to make sure that contiguous is turned on, and I'm also going to make sure that sample all layers is turned off because we only want to look at the layer that we are currently clicked on, which is the background layer itself. Okay, so we get all of this set. And then we're going to come down and we're going to make a sample. All right, so here we are. I've got the tool. I'm going to go ahead and put it right over top of this black blob here. And I'm going to single click with the mouse. And you can notice that as soon as I do that, it puts these little black and white lines around my circle, around that blob. And that is what represents my selection. Those are called marching ants. Some people call them dancing ants. They're weird. They're marching pretty clearly moving in a very meticulous pattern. Um, those are called the marching ants. And that area is now selected. And you can see how good of a job the magic wand did. It was very easy to identify the difference between the tones that we clicked on and what wasn't that tone, the black area and the white area. Now at this point we have a couple of choices. We could say, all right, our selection is complete and that's the area that we want to affect. And I should kind of step back a little bit and say, that's the goal of selections. We're selecting areas so that we can change them in Photoshop, so that we can make an effect to them. Very similarly to when we talked about masking, we talked about painting on the mask. Selections are super similar to that. We're gonna select an area so that we can affect that area with some sort of adjustment. Maybe it's brighter, darker, change the saturation, who knows, but we need to select it first. So we have this area that's selected. At this point, if I wanted to select another area, maybe I want to change multiple parts of the image, I can do that. And the way that we do that is up here in the options bar. Right now I'm on the first of those four selection modes. And what that means is that if I go to the red circle and I click on it, it's going to deselect the black blob. And you can see the black blob no longer has marching ants around it. And instead, the, black, the red circle will be selected. Well, if you're on that first mode, it only lets one area at a time be selected. As soon as you make a new selection, the old one goes away. Well, we haven't done anything to that black blob yet, so we don't want that old selection to disappear. So I'm going to go Control Z. I'm going to step back in time one adjustment, one action. And now what I'm going to do is put the tool on the second mode, the one that looks like two little boxes overlapping with one another. And now you'll notice my magic wand has a plus sign under it. And now with the black blob selected, I'm going to click the red circle. And you'll notice that it adds that area to my selection. That second mode in the options bar is the add to mode. Any area that we go to click on, it adds that area to the selection. And just so you know, the third mode is subtract from. So if you have a selection and you want to remove an area from that selection, you can go to subtract mode, click the area you want to remove, and it will remove it from that area that you have already selected. And the fourth one is difference. Basically, the area of the two selections where they overlap, that's what will be left selected. So we have a few different ways to, to work these tools. For me, most of the time I'm on either the first mode where it just makes a new selection each time you click, or the second mode where we're adding to our selection as we keep going, okay? So we have a selection made with the magic wand. The next thing I wanna do is go up to layer, new adjustment layer, hue and saturation. Let's say that I want to affect this area in some way. Now, before I click this button, I need you to think about something. Hopefully you've watched part one and part two on adjustment layers and masks so that you understand how this works. But if we think back to the last video on masks, we remember learning, hopefully you remember learning, or if you don't, go back and watch it. We remember learning that a mask is simply a way to turn on an adjustment or turn off an adjustment or turn on a layer or off a layer in certain places. Well, if we think about this, if we just selected these areas and we go in and make an adjustment to those areas, what Photoshop's gonna do is it's gonna take that selection and it's gonna turn it into a mask. And if you think back to our, our masking video, we talked about how the areas of the mask that are white or white, however you want to say it, white are going to be the areas where that layer has an effect. And the areas that are black are going to be the areas where the layer does not have an effect. So watch this. As I go layer, new adjustment layer, hue and saturation, and I name it 
change the blob and the red circle. Again, I like to name my layers. I think it works really nicely to keep things organized. Notice how the marching ants disappear and they're replaced over here in the mask area. We can see the mask for this adjustment layer. We've made a mask. Now, let's read into this mask a little bit. We have a hue and saturation adjustment. Again, watch the first video if that's gibberish to you. And that adjustment has a mask. The mask is white on the circle and the blob and black everywhere else, which means that this adjustment layer, the hue and saturation adjustment layer, will have an effect. It's turned on. It's working in the areas that are white and it's not working in the areas that are black. Let me prove it to you. I'm going to drag one of the hue and saturation sliders and I want you to notice how only the circle and the blob change. Everything else in this image remains exactly the same. And that's because this mask is disabling. It's turning off this adjustment layer everywhere except for over the blob and over the circle. So hopefully that makes some sense. A selection is just a way to make a very precise selected area change and nothing else will be affected. And when you make an adjustment layer, the adjustment layer is taking that selection, taking those marching ants and turning it into a mask, which is white being on, white being changing, black being off, black being unchanged. So hopefully that makes some sense. It's a little bit complicated the way that Photoshop works, but once you start working with it, you'll start to realize that selections and masks are pretty much the same thing. It's just a different way to view them and work with them. In one case, you're seeing marching ants. In the other case, you're seeing black and white on a mask. So both ways work. Now, I want to briefly talk about the quick selection tool, the second of our tools for the day. Because the magic wand tool, like I said, it's great, but it can't see colors. And I want you to think about that for a second. Let's say that you had an image of some red flowers in front of a green background, okay? And let's say that they were all evenly lit. So they were uh, very like soft light. Say you took the photo on a nice cloudy day. Well, those of you who know zone system, and if you don't, I recommend learning. It really helps with, with exposing in photography. Zone, if you have bright red flowers and bright green grass, they're both zone five or zero on the meter. Well, that means that if we were to view red flowers on a green background in black and white, the red and the green would be indistinguishable from one another because they're the same brightness value. They're both 18% gray or middle gray or halfway between white and black. Well, if we use the magic wand to try to select the red flowers, it's not going to be able to tell where the red ends and the green starts. It's just going to see it all as the same. So it's going to be really hard to use that tool to make a selection of just the red flowers. The quick selection tool, on the other hand, can see the differences between the two. So I want to talk a little bit about that. That's the main key difference. Let me move over here a little bit to a different area of this image. And let's say that we wanted to select this little colorful blobby over here. Well, the colorful blobby is a lot of different tones. So the magic wand is, is not really going to have an easy time seeing that because there's so many different. There's some darker stuff and some lighter stuff. But the one thing that's true is that the whole blob is different in color than the area around it. So if we wanted to select that blob, we would probably want to use the quick selection tool. So it lives with the magic wand. I'm going to come over here to the fourth tool down, click and hold, grab that quick selection tool. And again, I'm going to check the options bar and you'll notice that there's those same modes. We have the new selection mode, the add to and the remove from. I'm going to put mine on the new selection mode. And you'll notice also that the quick selection actually works like a brush. So you can use the bracket keys to adjust the size. And I'm going to get a nice good size brush, something like this. And all I'm going to do is click and drag and paint on this blob. And you'll notice instantaneously it sees that blob. It's able to distinguish the difference between blob area and not blob area very, very quickly. So let me do that again. I'm going to go Control D, which is a good keyboard shortcut to know. Control D, deselect. So if you want to start over, if you've made a horrible, horrible mess, Control D will do that. You can also go Select, deselect. Either way works. I'm going to go ahead and do that again. I'm with a little bit of a smaller brush and just show you guys. So I'm going to click and drag and paint over this blob. And watch how not far I have to get. There we go. I just painted like half an inch and it was able to see that difference. Now, with my selection active, I can go up to Layer, New Adjustment Layer. Let's do Curves and let's call it Change 
keep misspelling change. Change the colorful blob. Hit OK. And you'll notice it makes a mask for us, a mask where the blob is white, meaning the blob is going to change and everything else is black. And I can simply take that curve adjustment and I can make the whole blob brighter, the whole blob darker, and you'll notice nothing else on the image is changing. So hopefully this gives you a basic understanding of selections. We'll have a more advanced selection video coming soon, but what I would recommend you guys is just open a photo, think very simply, okay, on this area I want to go in and I want to change that very specific thing. So is that specific thing a different tone than everything else around it? No, okay, is it a different color than everything else around it? Yes, okay, so let's use the quick selection tool to select that thing. We'll grab a selection around it, then we'll go layer, new adjustment layer, pick some adjustment that you want to make, maybe curves, maybe hue and saturation, and apply that adjustment to that specific area. Make the adjustment, make it, make it happen, you'll see it'll convert the selection into a mask, and you should have a nice mask where everything's black and only the area that you selected is white. If you make a mistake, control D will deselect, you can always escape, you can always control Z, there's lots of ways to get out of what you want to do. You could even just close the photo and not save it if you make a horrible, horrible mess, but give it a try. Hope you guys like this video, you'll have selections part two coming soon. If you guys haven't already, enter our 10,000 subscriber giveaway. We're giving away a $1,000 B&H card. There's a link down in the description, so check that out. There's also links to part one and part two of the basic Photoshop series, so you guys should watch those if this was a little bit advanced for you. It took off right where I left off on that second video, so make sure you watch those as background content. Thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button if you liked it. Hit the dislike button if you didn't like it. Leave a question, comment, concern, anything down in the comments box. Hit subscribe with the little bell icon so you can stay up to date with future videos. And thank you guys so much for watching, and thank Thanks to Canon for providing these cameras so that we can record this great content. You guys are awesome. Keep shooting, keep having fun, and I'll see you in the next one.